Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the OG, the original Grognard, Devin, back at the Grognard's Corner Table. And we are going to continue our playthrough, or actually start our playthrough of Upfront. Um, erroneously said last episode that the game was released in 85, it was actually released in 83. Little numbers like that I always tend to mess up. Uh, so basically, before we actually jump into the gameplay, I wanted to kind of give kind of an overview of what my plan is going to be. Because whenever I do a game that's not really solo friendly, I try to come up with the initial plans, what both sides are going to do. And try to stick with that game plan through most of the game. It usually doesn't work like that, but we're going to see what happens anyways. Basically, what we're going to do with the Germans is group one or group A as you can tell the Germans just don't have a lot of guys. They've got ten guys against the Soviets fifteen. So they're not gonna be really advancing too much against the uh, against the Soviets. You gotta remember to you gotta get to a range band four. Four squad four personnel to range band four in uh, 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 terrain that gives them uh, benefits uh, to win. So the Germans are basically just going to be looking to try to eliminate as many uh, Soviets as they can. So what I'm basically going to do with all of them is try to at least move them ahead one space. Uh, so that'll be occupying range band four for the Soviets. So uh, they'll have to try to push them off. Now this group's pretty much just going to sit back and dig in. Pretty much the same with the uh, light machine gun over here. They're going to try to get into decent terrain and just kind of sit there and pour fire. These guys, my B group, I've got four guys in there. They may try to push forward. We'll see how the circumstances and situation dictate. Um, basically with the Soviets, basically their A group and C group are going to try to advance uh, as fast as they can and as far as they can while the B group with the uh, DP-38 is going to be laying down uh, suppression and supporting firepower. That's the overall idea. <laughs> Who knows if it'll work out that way. Because as we all know, no plan survives first contact. So basically each side starts off with a number of cards and the Germans start off with five cards. Soviets start off with four cards. So, before the game starts, we get the chance to throw down any terrain cards we have. So, take a look here. This is really... Eh, this card is not going to be getting used for any time soon because I got to come up with 18 fire strength, and that's not going to happen until I get right, right on top of somebody. So, but we do have a terrain card. And we got a movement card. So, the thought is, do I start the guys out on the hill and then try pushing forward or push forward to try to get them to the hill. Now, the idea is I want these guys with the MG34 up on the hill. So I could play the, the hill card now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try to move forward and then play the hill card afterwards. And, okay, so Germans don't play any terrain cards. Let's flip over to the Soviets, and the Soviets have got crap as well. We got a pillbox card. This is considered a cower card, so this doesn't count as anything. Uh, we got the 16, one other 16 firepower. That's not going to be getting used anytime soon. Concealed card's always good, and a movement card. All right, so Russians don't have any terrain cards to play as well. Now, what you can do uh, and is you can leave the area in front of you blank. Uh, you don't have to play a card that basically represents open terrain, or you can just lay, you know, a regular up front card or the backside of an up front card as open ground. Um, now you can play that as a terrain card during your movement phase, uh, and I'll get into that in a little bit. However, you cannot play those cards as open ground during the initial setup. Uh, there was a time I actually thought you could, and I thought it was a good way that you can clear cards, you know, crappy cards out of your hand. You know, for example, if I was going to do that, you know, I'd have probably placed this card, claimed as just an open ground card, played it as a terrain card, and get to refill my hand. Unfortunately, you can't do that. So... 
You can, however, play the, play those as a uh, discard to throw a terrain card on an enemy group that's moving. You can throw an open open ground card. Uh, the opponent can uh, uh, decline to accept it, and then it does some things with movement. But uh, we'll see if we get into that, if we run into that. So Germans start off as the attacker. They're the first side, so they get to go first. So now we got to decide what we want to do. Obviously, this card isn't going to do us any good. So basically, we've got uh, fire, uh, these two fire cards generating one firepower. I could do that. Actually, I could play either one of them. My MG34 has got the range, has got a firepower four range zero, which we're still at because we haven't moved forward or advanced. So we're range band zero, or range zero, which gives me a firepower four. I could play one or other of those cards. And actually, the machine gun's about the only thing that's got the range. It, yeah, at this at this point, nobody can, nobody's got the range on anybody else. So we're not gonna fire because I don't want to take the long range shot because again. We wanted to play the movement card on Group C, so we'll go ahead and play the movement card on Group C. Move them range band, move them one forward, so that changes the relative range. And remember, I got my handy dandy little helper. We'll go ahead and move them, advance them one band forward, so they're at range band one, range band one for blue. And now the relative range between Group C's are now. Five, four, three, two, one. So we're now at range one, which is kind of good for the Germans because the German riflemen, the Car 98s, can actually generate one firepower at range one. However, the Soviets can't. They're Mazan Nagats. You got to be at least range band two before you can generate any type of firepower. Uh, basically, the only thing that they've got on their side that can reach out is their DP 28 which is, you know, kind of not quite as good as the MG42, but they can reach out at range band zero. So that is the German phase, and I don't get a discard. There are only certain instances, actually I could take a discard, certain instances when you, when you can do a discard. The Germans can do a discard is it even... This is the one thing that always throws me. I, and I just read this before I started. They can do a discard... Can always disc, discard one card, even if they take an action. So I took an action by playing the movement card. So I can still discard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and discard this card. The fire six with the firepower. I, I don't even think any of my groups at point blank range 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 3, 6, 9, 10, yeah, even at point blank range 9, 10, 11, even at point blank range none of my groups can generate 18 firepower so this, this card is not going to do me any good I'll go ahead and discard that and you throw it in the discard pile up there um, and so then you redraw up to your, up to your hand um, so I've got three cards left. I draw two cards. And what do we got? We got a smoke. Uh, actually, we got two split cards. So we got a smoke card. However, since it's a split card, you look at the nationalities. For the U.S., it's a smoke. For the German and the Soviets, it's a coward. So this card is not going to do the Germans any good. And on this one, this is actually pretty good. It's a rally card. And it's also a radio card, but we're not playing with anything with radio rules. So the Soviets get it as a concealment card, and the Germans and Americans get this as a Rally 3 card. So this will actually come in handy. So now it flips over to the Soviet side. And what do the Soviets have? Well, right now the Soviets have kind of got crap. Um, they've got a movement card, they've got a pillbox... They got the concealed, you know, it's, it's the one problem with playing the Soviets is you got such a small hand size, it's usually your options are very limited, which kind of, you know, reflects the command and control, I guess, the Soviets had. Um, now, the Russians, their discard works a little bit differently. 
as long as the Russians don't do anything, they can discard as many cards as they want. So I think the Russians are going to go ahead and pass. They're not going to do anything. And they're going to take the opportunity to get rid of the, the, the pillbox card, which is a cower card, and the 16 firepower card, which really just does them nothing at this point. So they'll go ahead and discard those two. And they'll draw two. And we got a movement card. And we got a hill card. Okay, now we now we can start forming up some ideas because uh, we got a terrain card. You never want to be really. You want to try to minimize the amount of moving that you're doing there out in the open uh, as much as possible because it get it hurts getting shot at when you're when you're moving. Um, so now I flip back over to the Germans and we'll take a look at their cards again. So, all right, we got a terrain card. We want to play the terrain card. Now, the only way you can play a terrain card on a group is if they've already got a movement card in play. So, go ahead. We're going to play the hill card on group C, and this is going to discard the movement card because they're no longer moving. They've moved on to the hill terrain. And the hill is actually pretty good for them because that gives them a uh, plus one firepower when they're shooting down the hill at somebody. So the MG42 or 34 on the hill, that's a good place for the, uh, that's a good place for the machine gun to be. Now let's see what else have we got. Now well, we got a fire one and a firepower four. Um, yeah, really, the only group that's close enough to be able to do anything with it is the group that that already did an action this turn, so they can't throw another card on them. So as the Germans, they get to discard, so we're going to go ahead and take the smoke card, since it's a coward card for the Germans, and we're going to discard that one. And we're going to pull back up. What do we got here? A rally and a fire two. Okay, we got some low-level fire cards. I think that... The uh, MG-34 is going to start opening up. Um, so flip back over to the Soviets. And what do we got for the Soviets? That's right, we got the hill, we got the movement card. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a movement here. Actually, we're going to put it this way. So plus one movement. And that's going to shift them to range band one. And we have to remember to move our little token, which adjusts the relative range, 5, 4, 3, 2. We're now at relative range 2 to each other with group C. Uh, what we're also going to do is, just because we want to try to cycle cards through our hand, we're going to go ahead and play this movement card as well on this group, group B, because we want to kind of get them advanced a little bit as well, because they've got the light machine gun, and we need to get them in a good position to start start laying down some supporting fire. We changed the relative range marker and shifted our little token on our relative range chart. So five, four, three, two, one, we're now at relative range one. Yeah, like I said, I know it's it's that math thing. I'm not real good at math and I need the I need the visual component to be able to help me. Um, so we got two cards left, but the Soviets can't discard any cards because they took at least one action. So if as long as the Soviets take at least one action, they can't discard any. But we've only got two cards in our hand, so we get to draw two more. Uh, we got a fire... F <laughs> That's actually pretty bad. We need four firepower to get one whole firepower. Uh, and another movement card. Okay, I was actually hoping to pick up a terrain card, but we, we, we can make that work. So we'll switch over to the Germans again. Or switch back over to the Germans. Now we've actually got some fire that we can put down on the Soviets. So taking a look at range band C. We're at 5432. We're at range band 2. And at range band 2, we can generate 6, 7 firepower. So, now you got to remember with crew served weapons, the guy who's acting as the loader can't add his firepower in. So we've got 6 points from the LMG at range band 2 and we've got 1 firepower at range band 2 from the car now or from the yeah, from the car from the Mauser. So that's a grand total of 7. Now the cool thing is <coughs> you can play as many fire cards as you have the firepower for. So since at this range, 
fire group C firing at group C generates seven firepower. I could play all three of these cards together, combine the firepower together, and that would be my combat strength. However, we're not going to do that because we're just not. <laughs> so what we are going to do is we are going to play this fire four card. And as we've already noted, we've gener we can generate the firepower. We generate seven firepower. This only needs firepower four. So what does that mean? So that means we have two fire strength. All right, so basically what does that mean? Well, we need to adjust the rest of the firepower to come up with our final fire strength before we start fi figuring out what happens to the enemy. The Germans are on a hill, so they get plus one to their fire strength when they're on the hill shooting at somebody that's not on a hill. So this two has now become a three because they're sitting on the hill. And also, you take the movement state of the opponent into, a, into account. They're moving forward, so that gives another plus one firepower point. Um, if they were stationary, you wouldn't have that. If they were in a terrain card, you'd count that. And there's, there's some other things about terrain cards, uh, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see that. Basically, if you're on a terrain card and you move more than two, have more than two movement cards in play, you no longer get the terrain bonus. So basically it comes down to terrain card, movement. If you get shot at when you've only got one movement card in play, you still get the terrain bonus. The second you place a second movement card, you no longer get that terrain bonus because you're considered far enough away. Um, so usually you want to do kind of short bursts unless you think that the opponent isn't going to be able to shoot at you to go longer bursts. Uh, but this is that isn't the case here. So anyways, like we said before, we got two firepower, another plus one for being on the hill, which is a three, another plus one because we're shooting at a group in motion. So that's four. So that four is our fire strength. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, now we have to determine what this fire does to the enemy group. How do we do that? We draw random cards. Basically, you take the final firepower that we generated, which was four, and then you draw a card for each individual in the group that's being fired at. You remember how I told you last time, you always have these numbers in the upper right-hand corner, be they a red number or a black number. Black means you add that, red means you subtract it. Well, this is where this comes into play. So we've got four firepower. We draw the first card for the first guy, and you always go in sequential order. So four minus zero is gonna be a four. So you take a look at the personnel's card, and if the final firepower is higher than their morale, then they're gonna be pinned. If it's higher than they're killed in action, then they're gonna be killed in action. If the number is less than their morale, then nothing happens to them. Unfortunately, uh, Private Kazhnikov here has only got a morale of one. Final firepower was four, which is greater than one, less than eight. So he is going to be pinned, and he's going to be flipped over. And you do this for each person in the stack. So you do the next card, four plus zero, because it's a black number, is four. We look at the Soviets. Uh-oh. Private Sokolov has got a morale of two. That's not good. So he is going to be pinned as well. So we got four minus zero is a four. Morale of two. The Soviets usually don't have really good morale. I'll just I'll just I'll just say that right now. Uh, four minus three is an actually a one. His morale is a five, so one is less than five, so he's good. Four plus zero is four. Morale of four, unfortunately, that pins him, I think. Is it greater than? Does it have to exceed or is it equal to? Let me check that real quick. I think it's equal to. Uh, da, 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 da. Fire attacks, modify, fire resolution. Equal to. Okay, equal to or greater than. Uh, so then for the sixth guy in the group, it's a four minus two. It's a red two, so we subtract it. So it's a two. His morale is three, so he is, he's fine. 
Um, and that's basically how you generate the random numbers. You take whatever number you're looking for, flip a card, add the add or subtract the number in the upper right hand corner, depending if it's a if it's a red number or a black number. Red numbers you subtract, black numbers you add. Now this is called um, random number creation, random number pulling, something like that. I I can never remember what the acronym is, but there's a uh, we have to keep an eye out for any buildings that show up when we're doing a uh, PRC or RNC. Uh, position, random check, and random number check. I forget the acronyms. But if you remember in the special rules, first five buildings that show up from, e from either any of those cards being pulled are actually removed from the game. All right, so this is kind of a bad thing for the Soviets right now, because they got four pinned guys. The problem is, pinned guys can't move forward. I'm fairly certain you can still play a terrain card on them. Let me check that real quick. I forgot to check. Pin, 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 pin. Yeah, a group uh, containing any pinned men, pinned men may not place a movement card, although it may usually play a terrain card over an already placed movement card. Uh, okay. Uh, so, and the only way we can get rid of those is if we have some rally cards. So, let's see. The Germans did their little fire group. And we've still got... Oh, you know what I should have done? Ah, crap, oh well. Uh, so, I've got no other... Let's see, Group B, they're going to be at Range Band 1, uh, Range Band 1, because they're at 0, they're at 1. Taking a look at our chart, 5, 4, th 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, because remember you can shoot to an adjacent group. Uh, if you want to shoot two groups over, then it's one band further, but since you're shooting to an adjacent group, so it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, basically, because they're in range band 1. So we're at range band 1 with the German Lancers, and they can actually generate 1, 2, I can actually generate 3 firepower. If I wanted to, I could actually probably play both of those. And that is the thing. You can play a group. Uh, you don't have to declare all the actions with your groups at once. You can wait for the effects of one before you go on to the next one. Um, you know what? The Germans are in a good position. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's go ahead and these guys will take their three firepower that they generate with three, the three riflemen. And they're going to come up with three firepower because they can play both the cards because they have the firepower required. So the final firepower is going to be four. Uh, no ter no terrain modifier, no movement fi modifier. The target is, however, moving. So that gives them a plus one. So it's going to be four firepower. Plus one for the movement is going to be five. But the Soviets are going to go ahead and play a concealed card, which I should have done earlier. Oh, because I, but I forgot I had it. So that actually reduces the German firepower by one. So the five is now a four. Uh, and basically you just repeat the process again, although with pen guys, it does work a little bit differently. So let's go let's go ahead and play with the first one. Four minus zero is zero or is four. And basically his panic number is a two. Okay, so basically, again, you're looking at the same thing. If the fire firepower number is higher than the panic number, but less than the KIA, they panic. If it's higher than the KIA, they're killed. If it's lower than the panic number, nothing happens. So this guy will panic. Now, normally, I don't worry about anything beyond this because I usually don't play for victory points. However, what you are supposed to do is check for a possible route. Now, whenever a unit panics, it also could actually be a route. Now, what does that mean? Well, how do we check for a route? You have zero R, random number uh, chance or whatever, equal to or greater than two. Well, what does that mean? The card that was just pulled for their fire value is the card you check. And I'm about to hit the 25 minute mark, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause real quick and I'll be right back because the stupid camera cuts after out after about 25, 30 minutes. And we're back. So if you take a look down at the very bottom, you've got 
all these numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Usually that's to, to, to randomly determine the position if a sniper shot or something like that. But there are other things that is that these numbers are used for. Uh, so for example, the zero R, the zero column is used for the route number. That's what that little R is there is for. Um, let me make sure, is it? Uh, I always, this is so bad. I, I am such a child of the 70s that I still to this day cannot work it in my mind greater than, less than numbers. Uh, I remember being taught how to do it when I was in grade school between the friggin hippie teacher trying to teach us to hug trees and make tie-dye t-shirts but for some reason it never stuck so I stuck so I always have issues with greater than less than I don't know why it's just some type of impediment that I have And it's usually, they usually put it right in the beginning rules. Oh, balls. Okay, so that, yeah, that is greater than. So, route, if the 0R random number pull is greater than 2, the individual will go ahead and route. Well, the 0R column is a 6, which is greater than his panic value 2, so he actually routes. Now, like I said, I usually don't pay too much attention to this because I usually don't buy it for victory points, although there are a lot of people out there who do like take, keeping track of uh, the differences between route and panic. So I just wanted to show you that for completion's sake. Like I said, it's not something I really worry about that much myself because usually I either go to victory or um, somebody uh, loses half their men and flees the field of battle. Anyways, back to continuing on the numbers. Uh, so we got four for the next one. Four minus four is a zero, which is going to be less than his panic, so he's fine. Uh, four minus zero is zero, which is going to be greater than his panic. And for him to route, the RNC on the zero has to be greater than two. The zero R on the card that was drawn for him is a three, so he'll route as well. Uh, the next guy, four plus four is an eight. Things are not going well for the Soviets. Eight, oh crap, that's a killed in action. So he's killed in action, flat out. Four plus zero is a four. His panic's a five, so he's actually still good. It's less, or the four is less than a five, so no further effects on him. And four plus zero is four, and his morale is a three, so he's gonna end up pinning. So that was a very, very bad turn for the Soviets. Unfortunately, this is not uncommon with the Soviets because the Soviets do have such crappy uh, panic numbers. Uh, if you take an example, you know, some of the German, most, you know, take a look, most of the Soviets, you know, at least the ones that we were looking at there were twos and threes for their morale. You know, a lot of Germans, uh, fours, fives, although there are some ones and twos. I mean, there is a nice mix, but yeah, that, uh, that, that went, that went, <laughs> that went extremely poorly for the Soviets. Um, so basically the Germans have got two cards left and they've got one group left that they can play a card on. However, they don't have a card that they want to play on that group. So the Germans, regardless of how many actions they take, they can always discard one, but we kind of like those two cards. So we're going to keep those two and we're going to draw back up to our hand size. Oh, fire cards. Not good for the Russians. That one, again, a pointless card that we're not going to be, we're probably going to be just get, getting rid of that one. But these two cards, you can kind of tell there's a lot of uh, variety in 
in the in the fire card so here we need to generate three firepower for one one fire strength here we need to generate five firepower for one fire strength so it's not like you're going to be able to really say all right at with four firepower points i'm going to generate x amount of firepower it just doesn't work that way the cards are randomized enough that you can't guarantee what your firepower is going to be with any given value at any given range because there is such a wide variety for it all right so over to the soviet side now the soviets are down to three cards uh pretty much because um they played that concealment card now they don't get to refill their hand until the end of the turn so what are we going to do well we got some decisions to make this group probably is probably going to get put through the meat grinder a little bit more i don't have any rally cards um but i do have this hill card so i do want to try to protect my people so what we're going to do is we're going to play the hill card on this group that's got the machine gun which gets rid of the movement card and they take over as the hill now check something real quick about throwing down an open open ground uh, I don't know if that is yeah I can play any card face down um Okay, so since, since this entire group is pinned, they can't move at all except for to move into terrain. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to get rid of my fire card. We're going to go ahead and take this movement card, play that as an open ground. And so those guys will stop moving and will drop to the ground right where they're at. Now, I could keep this card out here or I could discard it. Either way, it's an open ground. So I, just for, for my own sanity, because I don't like seeing you know, that out there. We're going to go ahead and discard this. So, these guys are now in open ground. I can't try to rally them because, well, I don't have any rally cards. And I do have a fire card, so that group... So we did an action with this group. We did an action with this group. Those guys could shoot, but at the relative ranges, yeah, they can't generate the firepower. So... The Soviets will draw, so they can't discard since they did at least one action. So they are going to refill their hand. Let's see what they get. Another concealment, a hero, which is good. Heroes cards have got uh, a couple different uses. You can use them at any time. You can either use it to rally one person automatically or to generate double firepower from one guy at any one time. Usually real good to play on like, oh, I don't know, like machine gun. <laughs> Because, you know, even at range band 3, you're looking at 6, 7 firepower. You double that to 12. You can generate some really high firepowers with that. So the hero card's good. Concealment card, movement card. Okay, so not bad. So that's the Soviets so far. And we've slipped back over to the Germans. And what have we got for the Germans? Well, obviously the 14 firepower we're not going to be able to do anything with. Um, however... We got these, this 5 and this 3 firepower here. Now, these guys can probably generate, let's see, we're at, taking a look at our chart, 5, 4, 3, 2. We're at range band 2 for both, a relative range 2 for groups C and B. So at relative range 2, I generate 6, 7 firepower. Okay, so generate seven firepower. Cannot play both of those cards because it requires eight firepower. And let's take a look at these guys because they're at relative range or rel uh, yeah, relative range one. They can generate three firepower. The machine pistol can't generate anything, but the three lancers at uh, relative range one can generate one firepower. So that's three points. So we're going to go ahead and play the firepower three there. And are we going to shoot at those guys or those guys? Those guys or those guys? You know what? I hate to kick a dog when he's down, but I think we're going to go ahead and shoot at these guys here. So, we've generated a firepower of one. No terrain modifiers here. No terrain or movement modifiers here. And But you know what? The Soviets are going to play the conceal card. 
Uh, so it's going to be one minus one. So grand to- the, the the ending the, the total firepower that we're looking at right now is zero. So that's there is no other modifications. And we go back to the deck and draw random numbers like we have been. Okay, so zero plus zero is zero. His route, his panic number is a three, so it's less, zero is less than three, so he's still good. Well, not good, but nothing else bad happens to him. Uh, that's a bad one. <laughs> zero plus six is six, which is higher than the panic number, just barely, but not higher than the KIA. So he's going to panic, or he's going to route if the RNC is a is greater than a five. We took a look at the zero R column. It is a two, it is not less than a five. So he will just end up panicking. Again, the panic and route pretty much only matters for victory points. Uh, so, but like I said, I'm going through the motions. My focus went a little bit off. So we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna keep track of it anyways in case it comes into play. Uh, zero minus zero is zero. And his panic is a four, so he's good. So those cards. I'm surprised we haven't seen any building cards yet. Uh, actually, I think there's only five building cards. So those get discarded. That gets discarded. Um, the Germans still have a firepower five card they can play, and they're going to go ahead and play that. Um... Yeah, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and fire at enemy group C. How much how much firepower do we generate? Well, what range band are we at? Again, five, four, three, two, relative range band two. So we generate seven firepower, so we can definitely play that. So we get firepower one out of it, plus one for us being on the hill, it's two. No terrain state, no movement state for the enemy, uh, and the Soviets don't have any more concealment cards to play. So it is going to be a firepower value of two. Two plus two is a four. His panic number is a three, and he routes on a check of three or more. The zero R column is a four, so he is going to route. And the final guy of two minus one up oh, building this gets discarded do we still use I do not think we use the random number for, from it it is just immediately removed so we have to use another card one minus six is a negative five. Oh, okay that's a red six I can need to check because that may be a malfunction red sixes are always bad you always want to keep an eye out for a red six red fives with some weapons as well so, actually, I don't think Malfunction is in <laughs> this first scenario. I think Malfunction... Yeah, Malfunction isn't until the later scenarios. But if we were playing with Malfunction... Let's see... Yeah, then you... Uh, do a random position check to do determine which gun malfunctions. And there's a whole bunch of other rules to go along with it, but we're not worried about that because we're not using malfunction in this scenario. So yeah, really bad things have happened to Group C. I don't think they're going to be advancing much more. Although, what I could do is, since these guys are at the same band, he could do a lateral transfer and join this group. Maybe. Uh, that, may not be in the, that may not be in the programmed instruction for this rules as well. Uh, yeah, it's not. Individual transfer is not. So, he's going to be stuck there. Um, Alright, so the Germans. These are the German, three cards the Germans have got left. They've got one group left that can do something, but you know what? There's nothing they can do. So the Germans can always discard a card, regardless of what they do. So they're going to go ahead and discard that 14, because it's going to be real hard for them to generate 14 firepower. And they draw back up. One, a two. Oops. The problem with these uh, 
sleeves on the uh, cards. They're still kind of new, so they're really, really slippery. All right, so we got to conceal the hill in a brush, which would be great if I had a movement card, but I don't have any movement cards. All right, so we're going to flip back over to the Soviets. And this is all the Soviets have right now. Because they played the concealment card, so they are not going to be able to um, refill their hand until the end of the turn. So what do we want to do with them? <sighs> group B is in a good position on the hill. Although I think Group A actually wants to start advancing. Because you know why? German Group A is really kind of weak. So... <laughs> I think the Russians are going to be pushing up Group A because Group C's advance got butchered and the Commissar is probably shooting people right now. Um, you know what? I don't want to play the hero card. I could play the hero card to rally this guy, but at this point, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to save the hero card for generating uh, double firepower. But we do have a fire one card. So I think these guys are going to see if they can generate the firepower. So their relative range, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So their relative range, 1. Uh, they can generate 4. That's it. All they can generate is 4 from the DPM 28. Uh, so that's going to be the firepower they generate. So it's going to be 4 firepower, or fire strength, and they're going to be 1 firepower. They get the plus 1 firepower for being on the hill. So that's going to be two, and there's no terrain or movement state for the Germans. So we're looking at a two number against the Germans. So we have two minus zero is two, and German assistant squad leader, I think, yeah, it's the assistant squad leader, morale four, so he's good. So next guy, two plus one is a three. His morale is a 2, so he's going to pin. So 2 plus 2 is a 4. His morale is a 3, so he's going to end up pinning. And then 2 plus 3 is a 5. Morale of 4, that's going to pin him as well. So firepower can be really effective if you can get you know, enough firepower to get over their panics and then, you know, get lucky enough to pull a bunch of red numbers, as we have seen. Now, this isn't as going to be as deadly to the Germans as it was to the Soviets, because the Germans have got a couple rally cards. All right, so the Soviets have got one card left, so they're going to go ahead and draw. Their turn's going to be done. They can't discard because they did at least one action with a group. They actually did with two groups. So they get three cards. Now, see, could have used that Rally 5 a couple turns ago, but they did get a Gully. A Gully is great. We're probably going to be seeing that come into play soon. And another movement card. That actually firms up the Soviets a little bit. So we're kind of happy with how that has uh, has managed to, uh, to kind of turn around for the Soviets. We'll be seeing that in a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I am going to cut it here because I think we're hitting about the 45-minute mark. Um, and, yeah, that's actually the basics of, of up front. I mean, obviously there's, you know, more complicated with lateral transfers, flanking fire, ordnance, and all that other stuff. But this is basically the basics of the game. And this is once you get the mechanics down, once you get the idea of the game down. It actually flows really well. It's just getting the basics of the game down because the rule book is poo. <laughs> so I think that's going to do it for tonight. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. And I will see everybody next time. See ya!